guys, Ms. Miklos here, and in tonight's lecture, we are going to be talking about something completely new called the Law of Cosines. And um, you guys may be wondering, why the heck do we need to learn more formulas? And the reason why we need to do that today is because we are going to be working with non-right triangles. And so we cannot use Pythagorean Theorem or use Sokotoa. And the reason is we don't have a hypotenuse, so these ratios um, no longer make sense for us. So just like we did in previous um, problems here, I know that capital letters represent our angles. And, and opposite from those angles, we have a lowercase letter that is exactly the same that represents the opposite side. So the formula that we are going to be using today, obviously I already told you, is called the Law of Cosines, and it is going to help us find either missing sides or missing angles for a non-right triangle. And our formula is c squared equals a squared plus b squared, which this should look like our Pythagorean theorem, and then we're adding on minus 2ab cosine of angle c. And I want to stress to you guys that we could actually use angle A, angle B, or um, whatever we want, but whatever angle I use here, its opposite side needs to be isolated. So for example, if I use angle A here, this would need to be side A and this would be sides B and C. So I'm just going to write that these have to be the same letter. Okay, so rather than memorizing three different formulas, we can just remember this single one. I just need to know that I can use any of my three angles. And um, I know we're really used to the idea that C is the biggest angle, but that is not always going to be the case in our non-right triangles today. Okay, so let's start with a pretty basic one here. So in this problem, sides B and C are given to me. Um, I do not know side A, but I do know angle A. Okay, and um, I know I cannot use Pythagorean theorem because this is not a right triangle. So I'm going to set up law of cosines. Since I have angle A, I'm going to put side A all by itself. So I have A squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine of 38 degrees. So I have a squared equals 12 squared plus 10 squared minus 2 times 12 times 10 times the cosine of 38 degrees. Now the really nice thing about this formula is my unknown value is pretty much isolated. In fact, I can go ahead and just put everything that is to the right, um, on the right side of the equation, straight into my calculator. Um, since we are working in degrees, remember, it would be very important that we are in degree mode. And when I put that all into my calculator, I get a value of like 54.8774. And I want to stress to us that I don't want to round this until the final answer. And I know we've talked about that a little bit before. Okay, now obviously I'm not going to write out every single um, decimal place on my um, notes here or on a worksheet or on a quiz. Okay, but I want to keep the exact value in my calculator. So I'm just writing keep exact value in calculator. So then what I'm going to do, I'm going to square root both sides. And um, just to remind you guys how we could do that um, on our calculator really easily. I know that we all know where the square root button is in our calculator. But just a reminder that if I want to put the previous answer um, into um, like a calculation, I just need to press second and then the negative symbol which is right next to the decimal point. Okay, this second negative gives me the previous answer. So instead of typing this in, I can just do the square root, 
second answer, and it will give me our actual value, which in this case is A is equal to 7.4. Okay, today we are going to round everything to the nearest tenth, and um, I know that I can round at this point because that is our final answer. So moving on to number two, um, they give us A is 30, C is 37, angle B is 102.6 degrees, and side B is what we're trying to find out. So once again, since I have angle B, that's the angle I'm using, so I need to put side B all by itself. So I'm going to do B squared equals A squared plus C squared minus 2AC times the cosine of angle B. So in this case, when I substitute those values in, I get 30 squared plus 37 squared minus 2 times 30 times 37 times the cosine of 102.6. So this is very similar to that last problem that we did. And when I put this into my calculator, um, hang on, let me go ahead and do that right now. So looking at my calculator, I get a value of 2753.2780. Okay, and I know that continues. Then I'm going to square root that, and I get 52.5. Now, this seems like a pretty big answer, but just a reminder that it would make sense that side B is larger than A or C because it is opposite our biggest angle. Okay, so I know um, that whatever's opposite from the biggest angle has to be the biggest side. Whatever's opposite from the smallest angle has to be the smallest side. So quite honestly, um, finding lengths of sides using this um, formula does not get that much tougher than what we're seeing right now. Okay, so let's move on to a problem that's a little bit more difficult. And as you guys can see on this problem, they're giving us all three sides and I need to find this single angle. So since we're finding angle A, guess what side we're gonna put all by itself? And you are correct, it is going to be side A. So I'm gonna go ahead and do A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus two BC cosine of angle A. So when I actually substitute all that stuff in, I get 14 squared equals 15 squared plus 18 squared minus 2 times 15 times 18 times the cosine of angle A. And what I really want to stress to us is that this is like we have three completely separate terms. Okay, so we need to treat these differently. I can't just put it all into my calculator because I know that A is what we are trying to isolate. Okay, so eventually I need to get cosine of angle A by itself, which means I need to do these three pieces separately. So I'm going to figure out what is 14 squared, and that is 196. 15 squared plus 18 squared is 549. And negative 2 times 15 times 18 times the cosine of A is negative 540 times the cosine of A. And a big temptation here is to want to combine these like terms, but alas, they're actually not like terms, so I cannot do that. Okay, the reason why they are not like terms is because this 540 is connected to cosine of A, and this 549 is just all by itself. So it's like it says, 5 minus 8x, we know we can't combine those, okay? So just because it says cosine of angle A doesn't mean we're doing anything different. So I need to somehow get cosine of A by itself, so I'm going to subtract 549 from both sides, and I get negative 353 equals negative 540 times the cosine of angle A. Then I'm going to divide both sides by negative 540. So, I, am, I now have cosine of angle A all by itself, and we need to kind of think back. Um, we've learned previously when I'm trying to find an angle, I know I need to use cosine inverse. So I'm going to do cosine inverse, 
And I'm gonna take away the negative signs just because, you know, why type them? I know negative divided by negative is a positive. But I'm gonna type this fraction straight into my calculator and do cosine inverse of 353 divided by 540. And that tells me that angle A is actually 49.2 degrees. And to me, this would be a reasonable answer because side A was the smallest side, so it would make sense that angle A should be um, on the smaller side as well. So once again, what makes this problem a little bit more difficult is that my unknown value is not isolated already. So we need to definitely do a little bit of work to somehow get cosine of angle A all by itself. So if we look at number four, um, once again, all three side lengths are given to me. Um, this time though, instead of saying find angle A or find angle B, they tell us to find the largest angle. So we need to think a little bit here. If I look at these three sides, I know that the largest angle is opposite the largest side, which has to be B. So that means that I'm going to do B squared equals A squared plus C squared minus 2AC times the cosine of angle B. So I have 29 squared equals 18 squared plus 16 squared minus 2 times 18 times 16 times the cosine of angle B. Once again, I have three very distinct distinct parts to this particular problem. So I'm going to treat them all separate. When I do 29 squared, I get 841. 18 squared plus 16 squared is 580. And negative two times 18 times 16 um, becomes negative 576 times the cosine of angle B. We already know that these are not like terms, so I could not combine them. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 580 from both sides. And I end up getting 261 equals negative 576 times the cosine of angle B. And I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by negative 576. Um, just kind of a side note here. At this point, 